Welcome to Why Do Catholics, the podcast from Catholics that talks about what Catholics believe. My name is Rachel Bryson, and I'm your host. Well, welcome back to Why Do Catholics, a podcast of the Diocese of Harrisburg. And I am so excited to welcome back Father Josh Cavender. Well, welcome back, Father Cavender, to uh, Why Do Catholics, our last episode on it's, the mass it's such a joyous and sad moment you know i i, I it's, it's been it's been so much fun doing these episodes with you oh well same here and i know it's hard to believe that that we're already to the our last episode on the mass but uh i know we've got you know a, a lot to cover during this last episode as we kind of wrap up what happens in the mass and uh and the next two parts that we're going to talk about are you know the our father and the sign of peace which uh, I know you were telling me earlier are, uh, you know, they're they're kind of both signs of unity. So I was hoping Mm -hmm. you could explain that a little more. Absolutely. uh, So as we look at kind of the flow of the Mass in general, we we are uh, taking a time in the Liturgy of the Word, the beginning, you know, we, the, the introductory rites are, are uh, preparing us to enter into the mystery of the Mass. The Liturgy of the Word prepares us to see Christ and, and to, to enter into that mystery of that relationship with Him in the Word. And that relationship with the Word lends itself to being in a relationship with Him in our bodies. So, so we, we prepare for, in the preparation rites, we then Christ shows up in the Eucharistic prayers we talked about last time, and now we are preparing to receive him. So we have that we're preparing for this moment of unity, this profound unity where we actually receive Christ into our bodies, which is mind-blowing in and of itself. So how do we prepare for that unity? And, and symbolically with our bodies, with our souls, how do we prepare for that? Well, one sign of that unity, the first sign that, we, that you had mentioned, the Our Father, mm-hmm. It shifts from from the prayers of uh, the Eucharistic prayers into praying the Our Father. So Christ gave us these words and 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 said, you know, Our Father who art in heaven. Well, what does that mean to say Our Father? Well, that means if if he if 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 my father and your father are the same person, then that means that we are brothers and sisters. So there's this familial unity that we have in approaching in approaching that relationship with Christ in the Eucharist, that in Christ, God the Father has adopted us. So at a base level of this communion with with each other and with Christ, we share this unity as siblings in in God our Father, and or s- siblings uh, under, or we're sons and daughters of the Father and, and siblings with Christ. So, uh, so, so one of the first levels of, of unity that we have is this prayer that Christ gave us in the Our Father. Uh, and it's not simply a unity of prayer, but, you know, an actual fact. You know, by our baptism, we are sons and daughters of the Father. Therefore, uh, you and I, sitting here in this room, are in fact brothers, uh, brother and sister in, in our relationship with the Father. Uh, so, so the second sign of that, uh, of unity, is... Unfortunately, we we talk about you know, uh, you know we we see in today's uh, in today's world it's a fallen, broken place, and that's why Christ came to save us. So, uh, you know, it's not just about having that relationship as brothers and sisters, but that 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 can't be a broken relationship either. Mm-hmm. So 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 not only is there a unity in in a sense uh, spiritual blood, as it were, uh, well, literally, I guess. Our spiritual blood is upon the altar at that moment, uh, the blood of Christ. Uh, but but that, that we also have a peaceful unity among the members of the church as well. It's, it's not just saying like we're brothers and sisters, but mm-hmm. that there's a peaceful relationship as brothers and sisters together. So we enter into the sign of peace. And it's not just simply a, a earthly peace. Uh, it's, uh, you know, we don't go into uh, a family and say... Okay, you know, you say sorry, you say sorry. Okay, shake hands, kiss, make up. You know, uh, you know, as 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 brothers and sisters, uh, you know, siblings are. It's a constant battle of parents, right? Uh, to 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 get their kids to make sure that they're they're in unity with each other. But uh, that that the unity that Christ gives is a unity that's so powerful, and and a peace that's so powerful that that he made peace with his own blood, with the people 
that were actively killing him on the cross. So if that's the peace that Christ is offering us, the question we have to ask ourselves is what is the what is the peace that we are sharing with each other? Like somebody's injured you, somebody has has been uh, mean to you, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you've been mean to somebody else, or maybe not you. I don't know. It's the, the the proverbial you out there. Uh, you know, if 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 we have been mean to somebody else, that. If we are truly sons and daughters of the Father, if we are truly in the body of Christ as Christians, we should be making every effort to share that peace of Christ with others. It doesn't matter if they want to make peace with you. We have to be making peace with them. Uh, we have to be making that gesture. So so it's, it's not simply this time to like, oh, you know, okay, Everybody break, shake hands. Okay, now we're back to mass again. No, there's it's it's a the, the simple handshake or embrace, uh, you know whatever that sign of peace is that we're giving to the the people to our left and to our right, at the sign of peace. It is it's it's symbolic of the peace of Christ flowing from the cross into our own lives, and then that we are then sharing that peace and unity with the people around us saying like listen we are all one body we have god as our father we're in a good relationship with each other now we can enter into the unity that is eucharistic communion and i i know that it's kind of flows really nicely into you know the next portion uh, of the mass which which is communion and um and i know we were talking you know before we started recording about how um, you know, this is another form of unity. So we've just, you know, we've just shared two forms of unity with saying the Our Father and, and showing a sign of peace. And now we get to continue that sign of unity when we go to communion. So uh, do you have any thoughts uh, about that part of the Mass? Uh, sure. The, you know, the, the, we talk about communion, literally, you know, uh, you know, communion, like, like with, you know, union, unity with each other. Uh, but it's not just unity with each other. It's unity with Christ. And in Christ, it's only in that profound unity of Christ that we have unity with each other. So what does that look like? To realize what is happening in this moment, that that the body of Christ on the altar is being received by the people in the pews. And that, that, well, who are the people in the pews receiving the body of Christ? How do we refer to the church? Well, if, if you read St. Paul for more than, you know, a couple of pages, he talks about the church as the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. So, so we are the body of Christ by our baptism, and we're receiving the body of Christ in the Eucharist. So we see this unity of Christ the head being united to, to his body, the church. So it's not just this, this act of like, oh, this is my time with Jesus now. It's not this sol- this this uh, uh, solitary act where I get to to have my little moment where Jesus gets to live in me. No, it's that we have communion with every single person united to the body of Christ. So why why is that important? Well, who's your favorite saint? Well, they're in the body of Christ for all eternity in heaven. That means that that we are sharing this bond with all of the saints that are in heaven. We're sharing a bond with all of those who are in a relationship with Christ in that unity of the body of Christ here on earth. So one of the things I try to pass along to people that, that you know, maybe have lost a loved one or, or you know, like, well, how, how, how can I still, you know, have, have uh, uh, you know, communion with, say, my, my grandfather who I was very close to or my mother who passed away, you know, no, my, my mother did not pass away. Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, uh, how, how, do I have, how do I have communion with, you know, say, say one of my parents who passed away uh, or, or, you know, a good friend? Well, if they're in the body of Christ and we go to communion, then we are sharing this unity in Christ, with the whole body of Christ, everybody who's attached to that body. So, you know, this act of communion is so profound. And if we if we took, you know, a little bit of time to pray with that, to realize how how Christ is entering into our bodies, and at the same time, 
we are part of his body. Mm-hmm. What a profound union that's there, literally a communion with Christ and a communion with Christ and his body. That certainly is profound. Now, Father, I know, you know, probably all of us have, have heard, uh, you know, comments as far as, you know, why are our, our non-Catholic brothers and sisters, you know, they're, they can't get communion mm-hmm. if they're coming to a Catholic Mass. Can, can you uh, maybe explain that a little bit? Yes, and, and many times if, if you don't uh, know why the, the Catholic Church says that, it kind of comes off as like, we have Jesus and you can't have him. It, it, and, and that's like, I'm sure that's what Jesus would want in his church, right? No, absolutely not. No, we, Christ, Christ desires to, to be with every single man, woman, and child for all eternity. So, so it would be horrifically sinful to hold Christ over somebody like, haha, you can't have him. And that's not what the church is saying at all. So, you know, we talk about, you know, how well, those who are not Christian or those who are not Catholic can't receive communion, and, 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 and that's true. But it's also true that not all Catholics can receive communion either. So who can receive communion? It's those who are in a, a, a state of grace, so they, they have no, no uh, mortal sins on their soul and not a, that, that have been, you know, that have not been confessed. Uh, in in confession, so if you're if you're aware of any mortal sins on your soul, you know get to get to confession, get those taken care of, uh, and and but and and have also prepared themselves to receive communion. I don't want to be, you know, lackadaisical, going about mass, not really thinking about everything. Like you know, this is the most important moment in history. How have I prepared myself to receive in this moment? So so it's those who are have prepared themselves, and and where do we get that theology? Well, if we look into uh, Scripture, 1 Corinthians, I believe, 11, uh, that, that, you know, uh, for anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body, eats and drinks judgment upon himself. We, you know, uh, different translations of that. He, uh, he who eats and drinks unworthily eats and drinks his own condemnation. So, so why, why is that? Because if this act of communion... Is, is this bodily and spiritual sacramental way of showing our unity with Christ and with his body, yet through our own sin, are, are not a part, like for, through mortal sin, are not a part of that body. Or, or we are a part of the body, but that relationship is broken. Right? So we, we don't really have that unity in our soul. Or if, if, we're, if we're saying as, as uh, you know, say different, Christian denominations that that we're not in the unity of the fullness of, of the church, or or you know if we're not even if the person's not even Christian, saying that like well, I you know I don't have that uh, the, the, that relationship with Christ as Christ Himself laid it uh, laid it out for us and in, in, uh, saying like you know to enter into this relationship we must you know convert and be baptized. Well, if all of those things are sign of disunity and communion is all about unity, then the sign that we are doing with our body in this, this sacramental way becomes, in a sense, a lie. Mm. Well, the last thing that, that, that I want to do within my own soul or that I want to have other people do is to take the most holy thing that we could possibly do on earth, this, this taste of heaven itself, and, and then lessen that by not actually, you know, showing what the symbol's doing, what the sign, what the sacrament, where, where we receive Christ in, in showing our unity. Mm-hmm. So, so it's not that we're simply holding, holding this over people and saying you can't have Christ. It's, there's, we don't want to lessen the symbol of the Eucharist, uh, the sacrament of the Eucharist, by not having the the unity that that Paul himself showing like you know you have to have this unity in order to to receive communion in this in um, as as Christ himself planned it uh, so uh, it is you know we, we desire all people to to come to communion uh, but you know we, we have to you know 
take a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, we have to we have to listen to how Christ Himself has outlined this this h- how He wants us to be in communion with Him, mm-hmm. uh, and and so this this moment of of communion is a profound mystery, and the last thing we want to do is it l- is lessen that in any way. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for explaining that, Father. I I think that's going to help uh, a lot of our listeners to to understand the reasoning. Uh, a little bit better as far as who can and cannot be getting communion. Uh, now, moving forward through through the Mass, you know, we've, we've had communion, and now we have this, this time after communion where, you know, you, you go back to, to your seat, you, you might kneel down, uh, but what are you supposed to be doing? <laughs> I mean, this is something that I even struggle with personally as far as, you know, I've, I've gone to communion, but... Now, what am I supposed to do when I go back to my seat? Sure, uh, you know, the, and there, there can be, uh, depends on what's happening in the church. I mean, not depends on what we're doing, but, like, uh, you know, but so for example, maybe the, 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 the choir decides to sing a meditation hymn. Maybe there's just a moment of quiet as, you know, all of the vessels come back to the altar and, you know, the, you'll see the, the priest up there purifying the vessels, you know, pours water, you know, uh, wipes off the patent, you know, consumes all, all the little particles of, 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 the, of, of communion, you know, certainly out of reverence for Christ. And uh, mm-hmm. you know, if the smallest piece is Jesus, then we want to make sure that we're taking the absolute most reverence to, to, to take care of Christ. Uh, but you know, kind of what, what do we do from a congregation side? at that moment. Well, if we've been building up for all of this Mass to enter into this great unity with Christ, take time to, to steep in that unity. It's not simply a time to say, like, okay, you know, I've, I've, I've received Christ, I've came what, you know, I, I've, 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 I've gotten what I've come for, so now, now it's time to, you know, uh, get to pancake breakfast in the morning, whatever it is, you know, or, or uh, you know, and there's, there's certainly, uh, you know, if there's like a, an emergency, you know, and, uh, you know, get a text, you know, your, your mother's dying. Well, you know, please, you know, <laughs> go, go attend to your mother. But like for, for all intents and purposes, like, like we're, we just received the God of the universe. We are a living, breathing tabernacle. The God of the universe is within us. You know, the great mystery of the Eucharist is not that, that uh, Jesus can turn, turn, you know, bread into himself, but that, that, when we receive Jesus, the God of the universe, we aren't vaporized in like our teeny tiny little mortal weak bodies. Like it's, it's, you know, to think about the God, like the, the largeness of the God of the universe and the smallness of me is a profound mystery. Mm-hmm. So taking time to realize that, that I have the God of the universe dwelling within me in this very moment. To realize... Uh, you know, the great mystery of what this communion is, this time of prayer, uh, to, to reflect on that mystery. And, and, you know, we've been doing this communion thing for like 2,000 years now, and many saints have written on that. So if, you know, if you're struggling to come up with prayers, to come up with like, what am I supposed to say? There are amazing prayers written throughout history by the saints who have said it so much better than you know I ever could, so so look up some of the prayers that they have, and you know bring a little card with you, uh, you know uh, keep it with you, keep it in your wallet, keep it in your purse, you know whatever, uh, you know, keep it in a prayer book that you have with you at mass, uh, and and pray that after after mass. Uh, you know one of the things you could also think about is, you know if Christ was if Christ was walking into town today. If he, you know, he's going to come down, you know, uh, High Street or Main or, you know, whatever street you want to pick in your town, he was, you knew that he was going to be walking through that day. You know, would you just run up to him and kind of like get a signature and get out of there? Or would you actually want to spend time with him? What would I ask him? What would I say to him? How would I thank him? What petitions would I offer to him? Who's asked me to pray for them that I can now offer to them in prayer in this communion? So in this unity. So... I can bring all of that into this moment where Christ doesn't just walk down the road. He doesn't just enter into the church building. He's entered into my very body and soul. So to reflect on that mystery 
and then to enter into that union and offer prayers. You know, if if you have a prayer that you like to say to Jesus, like what would you offer to him? You know, if what what is, you know, if it, in a sense, like from from kind of like a musical standpoint, if you're a musician and there's like the song in your soul that you would love to sing to Christ, let that beautiful song be sung in the depths of your heart. You know, don't don't go breaking out into you know whatever song for so everybody else can hear it. But like, you know, what what is that what is that beautiful offering that that you yourself can give? Mm. Offer it in that moment. Ask Christ for the things that you need to ask him for and pray for other people. Or, or at the very end of the day, just give thanks for what great mystery just happened and all the great things in your life. Just say, well, thank you, Lord. <laughs> you gave the grace to make it happen, so thank you. <laughs> well, that's certainly a big help, Father. So I, I thank you for providing those insights. I think it's going to be you know, very helpful, uh, not just for me, but for all of our, our listeners out there. Uh, so now we've we've gone to communion. We've had this quiet time in in prayer and reflection and and you know thankfulness to to Christ. Uh, so now we're we're getting close to the end, and I, and uh, I know we're we're up to the point of the blessing. <laughs> so you know what what happens during this blessing? Yes, the uh, so there's the prayer after communion, which uh, uh, then you have the uh, the the blessing. And dismissal afterwards. So, uh, and and you know, like any good Catholic church, some you know, m- many times announcements get 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 put in that position. But you know, let's let's just uh, well, the, the, there's not a liturgy of the announcements, so we're just going <laughs> to leave that out for a second. So, uh, so so after mass, if if you listen to the prayers that that are being offered after mass, uh, the the prayer after communion, it's always in thanksgiving. You know, uh, if it's a saint. You know, just as you worked all of your graces in this saint's life, you know, thank you for receiving uh, the the gift of the Eucharist. Let us go imitate this saint as they imitated you. Uh, it's about Thanksgiving and and uh, in of uh, in Thanksgiving for for you know, for the the Eucharist that we have just received. Uh, so just as we were giving thanks a second ago, you know, like praying after communion, uh, it kind of. If you look at how those those prayers are formed, that's kind of how the church sees us entering into that relationship and unity with Christ. I mean, Eucharist literally means thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. So, so in a sense here, we're giving thanksgiving for this unity that we have just received, or this communion that we have just received with Christ. And so, so like, what do we do with that? Like, what do we do with that unity? Does that does that flow into the rest of our lives? Does that flow into everything else? So. So it, the end of mass is not like uh, is not okay. Thanks for this that this has happened, and thanks be to God that it's over. Absolutely not. Like mass isn't just a scheduled block in our day. Now, it we do need to schedule it because it actually needs a place on our calendar. Like you know, it, it, to, life is busy and hectic, so we need to schedule things. Mm-hmm. But but it's kind of like think of, if we think of ourselves as a car. Like this is where we are filled up completely, uh, and that that we can only function properly when we when we are filled with Christ's grace. That's that's like the fuel of our spiritual life. But that doesn't stop there. Like cars don't perpetually stay at the gas station; they go out and do things afterwards with the with you know that that the the fuel that they have received. Mm-hmm. So what are we doing then with the fuel that? that spiritual fuel that is Jesus Christ himself. So when we go out into the world, like we should be bringing Christ with us. And we literally are bringing Christ with us, like in our very bodies. So, yeah. uh, so with, the, with, the, with the blessing at the end of Mass, there's a prayer of thanksgiving. Then there's a blessing saying like, okay, yeah, so uh, we'll understand it fully in a second, but we'll, Hopefully, I, I don't know if we'll understand fully the mysteries of God until, you know, we see him face to face and contemplate him for all eternity. But uh, there's the dismissal afterwards, and it's not like, oh, you're allowed to go now, but it's ascending. How, how do those dismissal, dismissals sound? It's, you know, the Mass is ended. Go in peace. You know, or simply just go in peace. Or go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Mm-hmm. It's about this go, this you are, you are being sent out into the world 
So, so the blessing is like a blessing of, of now you have received Christ, go out and take him to the rest of the world. Go out and let him pervade, uh, uh, like steep in, uh, you know, seep into every aspect of your life. When I, when I go to work, how am I bringing Christ into that moment? Well, I've received Christ in this unity, so, and I've been sent out to go bring Christ. So how am I bringing Christ into, that, into, into where I work? How am I bringing uh, him into my family? How am I bringing him into uh, you know, what I'm doing on a daily basis? So, so this whole, you know, the, the concluding rites of Mass are, are a mixture of thanksgiving for the grace we have received but also being sent by Christ. Just as Christ sent out the apostles, he's sending us out through the words of his church to go out and bring him to the world. That's incredible. And thank you, Father, for for explaining that. Uh, Now, I know, you know, very shortly before we started recording, we were talking about, you know, once Mass is completely over, you know, we've had the dismissal, we've had the recessional Mm -hmm. hymn, uh, you know, the, the priests and all the altar servers and Eucharistic ministers, they've all processed out. Mm-hmm. Uh, that sometimes, you know, the, the church kind of turns into a bit of a social hall. Mm-hmm. And that maybe we should look at uh, other ways of um, thinking about what's just happened mm-hmm. during the Mass. I know you had some thoughts on that. So I, uh, it's really important to be t- together as a community. Like that's uh, if if the only time we are ever interacting with our with our church uh, and if we don't know anybody to the to our left and to our right, uh, maybe we should start you know getting to know the people to our left and our right. And and it's so it's really important to be together, but it's also really important to be together with Christ, and and so uh, like there's you can be together with the members of the church, like anywhere. But there's only one place that Christ dwells in the tabernacle. So, so there's this time of, of you know, like after Mass, uh, that, that it, there's a reason that churches, so many churches have social halls, right? So we can go over and, well, socialize. Uh, but, but there's, like, there's only so much time in a Mass. It's not like you would want to do a holy hour between, you know, the receiving communion and actually mm-hmm. getting dismissed. So then, you know, Mass becomes a two-hour uh, thing every every Sunday. That's that's not exactly how the Church envisions that uh, to take place. Uh, so, so I highly recommend, like, after Mass, to take a moment of silence, to say, like, okay, maybe maybe Mass was happening a little... Uh, you know, I, I didn't quite have enough time to thank Christ the way that I wanted to. And, and ultimately, we'll, we, we'll never have enough time to thank Christ the way we want to until we have all eternity with him in heaven. But, but did I actually take the time in, for, like, from the depths of my soul, which is where Christ is dwelling at that moment, because you know, we've just received the Eucharist, to say thank you? to give an act of thanksgiving to to say lord like i am trying to thank you from the depths of my heart and i just want to spend a little bit of extra time with you like like once again going back to that that idea of like if christ came to my town today like i would ditch everything to go and be with him you know I, I, we would like what would we actually set aside uh, to, to go and be with Jesus Christ if he came walking down down Main Street today. And if wouldn't we want to stay with him as long as possible? So this is creating creating in the sanctuary of God's house a space where where we can sit there and be in silence and communion with him is a very important part of what the church is meant to be. And, and so, so I highly recommend, you know, you know, take time to pray after Mass. But you don't want to interrupt other people's prayers either. You know, like, there's, so, so get up, you know, say, or say, rather, 
say your prayers, thank the Lord within the capacity that we have, uh, you know, and then and then go out to the narthex of the church, go out to the front of the church, go over to the social hall, and then spend that time in unity with our other brothers and sisters in Christ. And so, so one of the things, you know, just be respectful of the people that are trying to pray around uh, around you in mm-hmm. mass, and 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 be respectful of of that time, that that very intimate time with Christ, where you know He's He's dwelling within us. You know, we have we have a uh, in a sense a, a closer intimacy with Christ in this moment than a pregnant mother does with her unborn child. That that's. We, that's very much the relationship that we have with Christ in that moment. Mm. So, so take time to steep in that moment after Mass too. It doesn't just you know end. And so, uh, part of that act of of being sent is is also taking time to reflect on, on the great mystery that Christ has given to us in the Eucharist. And and what better way to do that is than than, doing that on our knees before Christ in his dwelling place, in his house, in his sanctuary. So uh, take time to pray in the house of the Lord, in the church, and then also take time after Mass, you know, to, to go out and, and, and socialize and be a part of that church community that, that we need to be uh, to, in, in our relationship and life with Christ. Excellent. Well, thank you, Father. And, and that does bring our Mass series to an end. So yeah. I, I it's oh. kind of bittersweet a little it, bit. It is a little bittersweet, but uh, hey, next time we go to communion, we'll, we'll be able to to enter into this, you know, great, great unity and and have time uh, in, in a more profound communion in Christ. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, it's, but it has been a pleasure these these last few episodes being able to be here and uh, be able to, to enter into this time of prayer and communion. Well, we certainly can't thank you enough for giving up your time to be with us and to explain, you know, the parts of the Mass and give some insights into that. Uh, so I'm sure we'll have you back in the future <laughs> for other topics. Well, it'll be my pleasure and honor to be here. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank all of our listeners for joining us today. And stay tuned next time for Why Do Catholics, a podcast of the Diocese of Harrisburg.